Like vaporwave music, aesthetics, and content? Well, if this is your first time here, click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to stay up to date with me the moment I release new videos. So, for those who don't know, I used to speedrun Super Mario 64 back in the day. I was never amazing or anything like that, but I always found it fascinating trying to break a game down and optimizing its flaws to achieve the quickest time possible. For most who pick up Super Mario 64 these days, the game is a childhood time machine that reflects our innocent taste for gaming back in the day, where we didn't really care for a game's poor graphics or ludicrous storylines, we purely played games for the fun of it. And my YouTube channel focuses on Vaporwave, it's a genre of music that is heavily influenced by past imagery and nostalgic feelings. And this week, because my tripod broke and I'm currently waiting for my new one to come in from Amazon, I couldn't make a more traditional video you'd usually see on my channel, so I thought, let me try to blend the two things that I love, speedrunning and Vaporwave, together, and maybe introduce one community to the other and vice versa. So today, I present to you Vapor Mario 64, my personal best speedrun of the 16 star category in Super Mario 64 in 19 minutes and 4 seconds with some sweet altered coloration to the graphics and soundtrack by Vaporwave artist Hallmark87. So my friends, sit back, relax, and enjoy some vapory Super Mario goodness. Much love, your boy, Pat Jennington. Negate the cutscene of him talking to you, which saves about 7 seconds. Then we're going to go into Bob on Battlefield for the Bomb Clip star, or Clippy Clip as they call it in the community where you're going to grab the bomb bomb or bomb mom I still don't even know how to say it, and you're going to clip through the gate with it using a certain movement. You're going to catch it in midair and then have the speed of it trying to explode boost you into the gate, and then you clip right through. Game can't detect you, and Mario gets the star. Another cool thing is you're going to be ground and pounding right before you grab it you grab a star so press the z button right before you grab it and it'll cut that jumping animation after you get the star which saves you like a second or maybe like half a second i'm not even sure next we're gonna go into womp's fortress i think it's called yeah i, I haven't played this in so long crazy 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 looking at this now i used to sp oh my god the amount of hours i put in this stupid game <sighs> good lord okay Alright, so this next star, you are supposed to obtain it by using a cannon. Uh, you shoot Mario into this little piece of a wall, it breaks and there's a star, but there's a way to make Mario grab it without breaking the wall. There's like one little section you can clip with Mario, and I think I get it in this one? Yeah, so right there, there's like a little small section of the wall where the star is, but there's also a small section where Mario's hand kind of touches the star and you get it. So, we're going to be staying in this level for a little while. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stars you get in here. I'm, like, relearning this as... A, okay, okay, so this one. See, like, I'm relearning this as I'm watching it. So, this one is kind of basic. You just wall kick, boom, and then right there. And I would always know in terms of my time. If I was around the three-minute mark at this point, I knew I was on good pace, kind of, for myself. The world record, the last time I remember the world record, was... 1524 I think so 15 minutes and 24 seconds by this guy Zaya if that's how you pronounce it it was a Japanese runner and he had 15 minutes and 24 seconds and I remember starting this game I would like tell all my friends like guys I'm, I'm breaking that stupid record like I could totally do it and as you start okay so here yeah here I messed up but, I'm, but anyway so as I started playing I realized how hard this game really is to maneuver the camera and Mario's movement as you can see there I messed up a wall jump and I also bumped into him which Obviously, will kill some time. So here, you can actually jump through his mouth as he's falling, and you won't have to, you know, run around him and call all that time. And the other thing you want to do is you want to try to kill him and land where the star spawns. I don't know if I got it here. Yeah, so right there. So you don't have to run to it after you drop as Mario, which saves some time. It's all about saving the time, boys. That's it. And we're going back in. Yep, going back in. Which one is this? Which one is this? I'm, I'm learning now as I'm watching this with you guys. So, Alright, this one I think we're going to the top of the tower. So, this one you kind of do the same setup as before. Jump to the top. Bada boom, right there. And then, you're going to do this. Watch this little... And then add that, and I'm... Mm, saucy baby, look at that. Right there. And usually I always hit that stupid tower too. I remember I used to like... That was always a killer. I used to be on a good run, and then I would hit that tower and... It just absolutely pissed me off. So, but yeah, so for those of you who are watching um, from the Vaporwave community, a lot of us 
watch. So this, see, this is kind of cool actually, because it's gonna be like a mix of of both worlds. Um, so for those who don't know, I run a vaporwave channel, which is a genre of music. Um, if you don't know what that is, check it out. It's great, and check out my other videos. Just saying. But for those who are vaporwave followers or subscribers to my channel, watching this, I'm sure you've played Super Mario 64 before. Classic game, nostalgic game. We all love it. Um, and I originally, before starting to make the Patch Hennington channel, I wanted to make a speedrunning channel. But there are a lot of speedrunning YouTube channels. Definitely nowadays, everyone's kind of making speedrunning content and like good content too. You got like awesome top 10 videos and like historical breakdowns of runs. Summoning Salt, if you don't know who that guy is and you're interested in speedrunning, check that channel out. Like one of the best channels I think I've ever seen in YouTube history. So good. Um, yeah, so I, I was deciding what China I wanted to make a YouTube channel and I love speedrunning and I also love vaporwave obviously so I said to myself what channel kind of has a you know more potential to grow and something that I would enjoy doing and keep going with and I realized like I only really know Super Mario 64 how much Super Mario 64 content can I really make I wasn't really into any other speedrunning communities um, so I said, let me do Vaporwave, because I also don't really know a lot of Vaporwave YouTube channels out there that, you know, discusses albums and, and all that good stuff, so, but, but yeah, so back, back to the game, um, so that star right there is kind of cool, because when I was a kid, I used to carry that penguin and bring him all around the damn mountain, and then when I found out you could just do that, I was pretty mind blown. I remember, like, learning this game, learning to speedrun this game. Like, every corner I ran through, I was just like, like, oh my god, like, I can't believe as a kid, I did not know this existed, like, ugh, sick. Wasted so much time as a kid, but, alright, so now we're going to first Bowser, Bowser in the Dark World. Now, for a more advanced speedrunning route, you would want to get the eight red coins in this level, um, I think almost all levels in this game, besides, like, the hidden castle star levels, have eight red coins and they give you an extra star. The getting the eight red coins in this level, for me at least, was so difficult. I tried doing it and I just like I couldn't, so I did, never did it. Um, but that is like the advanced route. So usually you go and, and like the advanced runners, they skip, uh, like they glitch into Bowser first using this like crazy technique. Um, check that out too if you, you guys want to learn about that because I don't know how to do that at all. So yeah, so we're going to first Bowser. There you usually pop up the stairs, but you know, I know how to speed run, so I'm uh, jumping up, jumping up. I don't remember if I missed a Bowser throw here. You gotta throw Bowser into the little spiky balls over there, and I would miss it all the goddamn time. I'd miss it so much. I think, I really do think I miss a throw in this run on third Bowser. I think I do. I don't really remember. But yeah. There we go. First, okay, so you got the first... So Bowser's done. First Bowser's done. So that's... You're gonna get eight stars on the first floor. It's all coming back to me now. You're gonna get eight stars on the first floor. And then you are going to go to the basement. You're not gonna get any more stars up here. You got a ton of stars in the basement. We're going to the lava level. We're going to the sand level. Um... And you're gonna see me do some cool shit, kinda, because there's better ways to do it, but, but yeah, we're going down there. What, what's, so now that I'm thinking about it too, when I first got my Nintendo 64, I don't, re I don't even remember how old I was, but this wasn't even my first game. I think the first N6, I actually got an N64 really late in like my childhood I, I got a PlayStation 1 first that was the first thing me and my brother saved our allowance for was a PlayStation 1 then we finally saved up for a N64 and the first game we got I think was Super Smash Brothers we actually got the N64 pretty late but then like all the money <laughs> any allowance like we would get five dollars a week that was our thing parents put five dollars in this little piggy bank we'd have and anytime I get five bucks and he'd get five bucks we'd like pull it together and just save him for nintendo 64 games so you know immediately got super mario got mario kart all that good stuff um harvest moon 64 that is pat chennington's favorite nintendo 64 game of all time i must have put years into that damn game 
now that I think about it. I know every area of that stupid map. Ah, uh, yeah. That's Pat Chang's favorite. And Paper Mario. Oh my god, Paper Mario. Such a good game. Jesus. They don't make them like that anymore. But, yeah. So we got the PlayStation 1 first. And I think we played, like, Ape Escape religiously was what we played as kids. For some reason, we played Ape Escape. And, um, Marvel Super Heroes. It was a fighting game. It was... It's like Marvel vs. Capcom, but it's like the first one. So there's only Marvel superheroes in it. There's like only eight characters or something. So that was uh, that was our games back in the day. And then we saw the commercials and everyone we knew had an N64. So we had to follow suit and, and get one. Alright, so back to the speedrunning. So I could teach you some stuff that's probably not good at all to learn. Because you could learn it from somewhere else. That's better. But this is Hazy Maze Cave. So there's three stars you're going to get in here. This one, you do that, you mess up. And then you're gonna do a wall jump, bam, dive, and then hit that star. So you get another one right there. Then, then you're gonna go talk to Toad in the corner, and Toad's gonna give you another extra little star. So you do that. Talk to Toad, punch him, miss him, grab the star, and then you go right back in. So that's how you do this one. And a little swag kick to jump back on in. And now you're back. So the next one, the next star, is you're going to go into this room here. And then you're going to go to this right. You're going to jump up here, grab it, like that. And then you're going to long jump across. Don't mess up. And grab the star. That's that one. There are faster ways to do that one. There, I think there are faster ways to do every star I'm doing. So remember, this is like the third disclaimer. If you want to get into this, I recommend uh, checking out. Well, no, you got to start somewhere. So, or you can be like Pat Chennington. You could be super lazy, learn something, <laughs> learn one way to do it, and then never try to actually make it better. Huh? Uh. So this one's cool. This one's really cool. So this one is there's a little elevator. You drop down. You're gonna hold onto the wall, and the game is gonna clip Mario through, and you're gonna land right by the star. So you have to go through the whole level to get there save a bunch of time doing that so now okay so now this is where the game gets exciting so now you got 15 stars so mips the bunny is gonna appear in the basement so you're gonna go talk to mips you gotta grab him which is the hard part so this is the little route i used to use you grab him like that and then the cool thing about mips is he's gonna give you a star but you don't want to get it because it's just gonna waste time you don't need it so you're gonna pick mips back up and you're gonna go to this door right and if you put him in the right angle, you can drop him through. Right? I mean, you could drop him. See, I messed up. This is where I'd lose so much time. So you drop him. Mario will go through the door. And then you could re-pick him up. Or you can mess up like that. You can mess up like that. See, this is crazy. This was my best run. And look how much time I waste on this thing. I would mess this up all the time. So you put him in. You pick him up. And you jump backwards and the game pushes you through. So what Mips can do, his secret power, is he can push you through doors. So you're going to do it here as well. And this door, you need 30 stars to get through. And this is where the whole how do you beat the game with less than 70 stars comes in. You can clip right through with him. And that will get you there. So now you're at 15 stars and you're in the Bowser submarine level. Which you're not supposed to be. Because um, you need 30 stars to get there. So now you're there. You swim through... You go all the way through the level. I remember this level was really laggy. That that was like the thing with this level. You have to like alter the camera angles to like stop the lag. There you go. And then you look up, I think. Yeah, like that. So you go over here. This was another part I used to mess up all the time. I used to just like you jump onto the sub and then you'd run and then you'd do that. Um that's the Pat Chennington method which is probably slower. So then you grab that star. Now you have 16 stars, and that's the last star, believe it or not, you're going to get for the entire run for 16 star category, obviously. So now, we're going to go give the second Bowser a little visit in the Lava Sea world, whatever we call it. And this, this level, I remember, used to be so much fun to run. Like, Mario just keeps going. Like, the way you run with him in this level, you just keep moving, 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 and then here you jump into the lava, get burned, jump up there and then you don't do that that was kind of sloppy you want to jump up there 
Then you do some wall kicks to go up there. You're gonna go across this little obstacle course over here. And then you're gonna start climbing this tower. So the next skip, I guess it's not even a glitch, it's like a skip, you're gonna see is I'm gonna run through the side of the level um, on a very small kind of like tightrope almost that you can't, like you, it's a lot smaller than it looks. Like that whole like left area, the little greener area, you can fall through that. So you can't hit that area when you're long jumping. So then you burn yourself, you get into here, and then this is second Bowser. This Bowser also needs one hit in a spiky ball to die. So you're gonna go down there, you're gonna pick him up. Did I mess this up? No. Uh, maybe? Maybe I messed this one up? We're gonna see now. No, this one I got. So then you're gonna talk to the dead Bowser number two, and he's gonna give you a... He's gonna give you a little key. No. Yes, yes, they will give you keys. So, there's that. Interesting thing about the Japanese version. So, the reason some of you might be saying, Pat Chennington, why are you playing the Japanese version? I could say that I'm doing it for the aesthetic, but that would be too good to be true. But, actually, the Japanese version of the game is quicker to run because one Japanese character can equal multiple letters of an English word. Hence, there are less sentences or less characters. Hence, there are less... Uh, bleh less text boxes in the game to click through so the game runs a little quicker so that is why i am playing it in japanese i should have said that earlier people are probably wonder why is this thing in japanese for those who don't run the game or know about the game so here is backwards long jumping right so what you just saw right there was a 50 star door but what i did was if you long jump but go backwards and you do it on stairs mario starts building all this ridiculous speed in the game right and he could just clip through things. So here you're going to see it again. This is an infinite staircase, right? But if you start getting the long jump in, you could just shoot up the stairs and just negate any sort of boundary or anything. Um, so now I'm in third Bowser, just like that. That's how quick it takes to get from second Bowser to third without getting any stars whatsoever. So 16 stars, and we're already in third Bowser. You need 70 at this point. But we are here with 16, so... So yeah, so now we're in third Bowser. This level is like the vaporwave level of the game when I think about it. And Wet Dry World, you don't see that in the 16 star run, but that's like another level that just, oh my God, it looks, it looks sick. Um, so that, oh, okay, so this little thing right here, this little jump, I would mess this up all the time and then grab the pole. So many runs I used to do would just die because I would fall over there and just like, just die or I would, just not hit that pole and get stuck and it was a mess this game is like it's so it's such a perfect game to speed run because so many of the glitches happen right away in the beginning like the bomb clip and and that little star wall clip and then the end requires so much precision at least precision at least on uh, my level of playing and, and like you could just mess up so easily in the beginning so you just restart right away or you can mess up really easily at the end and you just ruin a really good run okay so here you have to this is the last bowser and you got to kill him you got to do that you got to run into him lose some more time but then when you're done doing that you got to hit him three times i think i think i get all three in this run so you grab him again and you want to hit all three spiky balls there's another and then you go for the third and timing stops so your timer stops the second mario touches the star and what's so sad is i can never get under 19 minutes so this is my best run this is 19 minutes and four seconds i believe let's say we're gonna find out right now it, yeah it's 19 or four yeah okay so this was my best time i can never get under 19 minutes and yeah, I eventually just gave up. I was like, this is stupid. I'm just never going to get this. And that, yeah, that brings me to today. So I haven't played this game in so long. And it's actually kind of cool re-watching this again. Um, and why I decided to make a video. So I don't really know. I'm actually waiting for a new tripod to come in. Um, mine broke this week. And I can't really film anything without it because then it's my hands are going to be all wobbly and whatnot. So I said, all right, let me think of something else to do. So I was actually going through my old Twitch account and I found this. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let me uh, let me make this into a video because this was really important to me at one time in my life. I was always playing this game 
and Super Mario 64 is something we've pretty much all played. I think all of us can agree on that, and it's super nostalgic. The aesthetic is great in this game. Look at those rendered 3D polygons that are just clashing into one another. Can't beat, you can't beat the 90s, man. You can't beat 1996. I think that's when this came out. But, yeah, that's Super Mario 64 16 star speedrun by Pad Chennington in a very nice colored variation of the game. So I'm going to call it Vapor Mario 64. And everyone's probably going to yell at me for saying this is clickbait, but I don't know. I thought it's kind of cool. Right, look, look at the cartridge on the thumbnail of this video. That's pretty sweet. Come on. All right, anyway. For anybody who's watched this full video, thank you again for watching. If you like Vaporwave content, please throw a subscribe as I'm going to be uploading content on the regular. And if you don't know what Vaporwave is, I highly recommend you check it out. It is some awesome stuff and some really good music. So yeah, thanks guys for watching. This is Pat Chennington, your boy, and I will see you guys again soon. Peace.